All right. Welcome back. So, the game we're playing today is an adventure written for Troika. If you haven't played Troika before, it's actually based on an old British choose your own adventure novel. Um, so it's it's weird and wild in its own way. Uh, the basic rule of the game is you're going to use two six-sided dice. You're going to either be rolling under your skills if you're doing something on your own, or you're going to be rolling plus your skills and trying to succeed over your opponent. Um, that's the basic rule of the game. Everything else we'll cover when we need to, um, or we'll just ignore it and do whatever we want. But those are the two roles you need to know about. Rolling under your skill, if you're doing something on your own, and if you're competing with somebody, you roll plus your skill to try and get above them. All right. So Three. why don't we do character introductions first? And then as stuff comes up, like, how do I cast a spell? What does equipment mean? I'll pause and we'll go through the rules and we'll mix and match uh, character intros and rule explanations. All right. So uh, going in alphabetical order, Dave. All right, so I am going to be uh, Preston tonight. Preston is, uh, you can see this skeleton is just like all decked out in like rusty car parts. Um, <laughs> got an arm, an arm through an exhaust pipe, like a hubcap on the head instead of a hat. Um, any sort of weird, rusty old piece of automotive machinery that's fallen into the sea over the many, many years. Um, as much of that as possible as that I found is attached to my body in some fashion. Uh, where do you put your hood ornament? Um, just around. I, mean, I think I've got like probably like six just running down my um, vertebrae on the back. Nice. <laughs> and uh, what are Preston's pronouns? Um, I think he and they. Works. And Preston, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of skeleton you are and maybe one or two interesting pieces of equipment? Um, right, so I am a junker, which um, I am driven to take things apart and put them back together into something else that's probably not as immediately useful as the way they were before I took them apart, but they are much more interesting afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, because we're all playing as skeletons, you don't have any need for food or water or sleep or even love. Instead, what you have is a drive, a goal, a purpose in life. And when you take steps to fulfill that drive, you recover your health and your um, resources. So a drive is an important part of every skeleton's existence. Um, what has, what have you been driven to create so far? Give us some of your cool devices. Um, yeah, so far, two of the things that I have on my person, it's, um, this, this strange looking metal cylinder with a button on one side that says familiar written across it. Um, and it's some kind of explosive device. I don't quite know what it does. I've never tried to set it off. And then I have this rusty old crowbar that is cursed in some fashion. I don't entirely understand the mermaid hexed crowbar. Awesome. Um, and when you say you invented a mermaid hex crowbar, did you just piss off a mermaid and that's Probably. your invention? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what else for the junker? Let me pull up the character sheet. Uh, you cut. You also start with two spells. Do you want to know what those spells do, or do you just want to wait and cast them and see what happens? I'll I'll go cast them and see what happens. Okay. Uh, one hint I will give you is that protection from rain needs to be cast on something, and torpedo throw is cast as like an action. Understood. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, as a skeleton, you have a base skill, and then you have a bunch of advanced skills that are more specific. 
So for example, one of your skills is taking things apart, which has a rank of five. What's your base skill right now? My base skill is five. Okay. So whenever you do something, if you're taking things apart, you're going to add your base skill to your advanced skill. So you're going to use 10. But if you don't have a skill, you just use your base skill. Make sense? Makes sense. All right. Any other questions about your equipment or your spells? If I do, they haven't come up yet. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Let's just keep it rolling. Uh, all right, Fal, you want to introduce your skeleton next? Hello. My name is Bonehead. <laughs> I am an infested skeleton, and my body is covered in dark lichen. Um, what uh, else do you want to know about me? How did you become infested? That's a great question. <laughs> you know, I spend I spend my life traveling around the world. And one night I woke in a feverish dream. <laughs> or was it a dream or nightmare? Hmm. Slowly it started at my toes, the infestation, and it grew over time. I believe in my travels I picked up some sort of evil thing. All right. Um, and is your parasite an entity that you communicate with, or is it merely a force that you are trying to control? You asked my friend Preston what his drive was. My drive is to rid myself of this parasite. Oh. It does try to talk to me, but I believe it wants to take my soul. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are Bonehead's pronouns? He and him. All right. And uh, most infested skeletons try to embrace their parasite and let it take over, but you are different. You are trying to get rid of your parasite. Um, you start with a random spell. Have you rolled one up, or do you want me to do that for you right now? Um, I rolled one. It was imitate. Imitate. Do you want to know what it does, or do you want to just cast it and see what happens? Chaos. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, oh, one other thing about spells is all spells have uh, a stamina cost. Your stamina is like your health, and you have to pay the stamina whether you succeed in the spell or not. So going back to Preston, let me read the stamina cost for your spells. I think both of your spells cost two stamina each. Mm -hmm. And then imitate. Imitate costs two. All right. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. All right, so we've got Bonehead trying to rid themselves of a skeleton or of an infested. Preston trying to build and invent more things. Uh, Billy, do you want to introduce your skeleton next? Yeah, I, I am uh, Clay Vackle. I am a very newborn skeleton, uh, and I, I just really think this is all made up. Like, this this can't be real, right? Like, there's no way. And do you think you're in a dream, having a trip, or someone's playing a prank on you? Oh, I, I think, uh, see, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a an assassin in my real life, a very good one, right? Like, very, very mm. good assassin. And I clearly, clearly, this is a plot by the man to keep me down. Uh, and this mm. is, and, and, and like, the last time they sent me on a mission was uh, to get this one Lux inferior, and, and that couldn't <laughs> have gone wrong. So, you know, I, clearly I got her. She didn't get me. So, like, this is all just a dream or a drug and do something, obviously. Awesome. And what are Clay's pronouns? Uh, he and him. And 
Very few skeletons remember their fleshy lives after they hatch. What makes Clay so special? Uh, just, you know, he, he has all these, like, all these really cool memories of, like, his past marks. Like, there's this guy, uh, he got in, like, it was a CEO of, like, this really powerful company. And, like, he's sure he got him. But, like, he wasn't quite sure if it was St. John's Newfoundland or St. John New Brunswick. Either way, he got somebody. And, like, everyone seemed happy about that. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Any uh, items or spells you want to mention that will help people get a feel for clay? Uh, yeah, I I have a, a, a boot with a knife in it, which is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, I don't know how, but it will. And I'm really excited to use the spell called Unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> I'm terrified. Um, awesome. Now, unexpected spell. You roll a six-sided die every time you cast it, and that tells you how much stamina it will cost. Okay. So even the stamina costs is unexpected. Cool, cool. <laughs> but like, I'm awesome. really like I fail a lot, but I'm I'm a quick learner, so this is this this is going to be all right. Yeah, what's uh, Clay's drive? Well, uh, that's that's the great part. I fail all the time, but when I try something, I learn something new every time. Whether it's useful or not, I don't know. But we'll see. All right. And uh, I guess the last... Oh, your, unex your accelerated memory costs two stamina. And do you want to know what that does, or do you just want to find uh, out? I embrace the chaos tonight, so let's, let's make sure. Awesome. I love it. Uh, all right, Vix, you ready to introduce your skeleton? Tonight, I'll be playing Crunch. I am a keeper. You see a skeleton with a large sort of um, a captain's hat with its decaying, also wearing a very long coat that goes down to my feet. It's also frayed at the ends. You see there's some seaweed kind of like wrapped into my rib cage and it's kind of uh, just swaying beside me. I kind of brush it out of my face every now and then. You see uh, a couple of small fish come up and like hide in it sometimes. Um, my left leg has uh, is kind of shaped like a pig leg, but it is just my bone. Uh, I'm wearing one boot on the other foot, and um, beside me are my henchmen. You see an octopus uh, by the name of Zed, and a stingray by the name of Ray. All right. Uh, awesome. And what are Crunch's pronouns? He and him. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about how you came to adopt Ray and Zed? <laughs> yes, well, you see, I've heard many awful things being said about Zed's kind. There's all this propaganda going around about how these... Uh, these octopus don't have any bones or decency, but they do have many evil schemes. And well, I say, I say that us skeletons have it all wrong. We have too many bones and not enough evil schemes. And well, Zed was willing to take my company. As for okay. Ray, I don't quite remember. I get the sense that I have had a lot of company in the past, and I pull out a spite collar that says Ori on it. I don't remember who this belongs to, hmm. but I've committed my life to finding out who. Oh, all right. And uh, what is your drive? My drive is to command. I hmm. am a commander. I'm a captain. Hmm. And I hope that one day I come across the perfect crew 
of these beautiful creatures and I just kind of uh, take a, a Zed in like kind of like a headlock sort of thing. Give him like a nuggie? Yeah. I don't think he <laughs> likes think that he very likes much. That uh, any questions about your spells or items? Um, I think perhaps no actually i don't i am i'm pretty i'm pretty you know just figuring out what my spells do as we okay. go <laughs> and uh a reminder about the spells the number next to the spell is how good you are at casting that spell it's your what you will add to your base skill whenever you use that spell it's not the stamina mm. um the stamina cost of Command Creature is two, and the stamina cost of Empathize is one. Uh, that's a good transition into your relationship with Zed. The, the propaganda about octopi, or about cephalopods in general, is very strong. Um, everybody knows that cephalopods are evil and have a plot. Because skeletons were hatched without any memories of their own, they have the ability to absorb memories from objects, environments, and creatures around them. This can enable them to talk to fish uh, or just get a sense of emotions. So is your relationship with Zed enough that you can talk to one another or do you just get flashes of imagery and emotions from it? Um... I would say that Zed and I are very close, and I I do believe that Zed is very capable of conveying his emotions very well. Um, hmm. However, I tend to go off and extrapolate what he means by all of these flashes and imagery. All right. And uh, that also goes for all of you. You can learn lots of valuable information by absorbing memories. Um, downside is whenever you absorb memories, you're going to have to use your luck. Uh, luck is a resource that all skeletons have, and it's a universal save. So if you're about to get hit by an attack or suffer a consequence, you can always choose to roll under your luck and see if you avoid it or reduce the consequences. And when you absorb memories, you are going to have to use your luck as well, because that's a dangerous exchange. Uh, and every time you use your luck, whether you succeed or fail, it gets reduced by one. And you can restore it by pursuing your drive, just like with stamina. So stamina and luck are your two main resources. Um, I think that covers most of the rules as well. That was really good. I'm glad we wrapped those into the same section. Any other questions before we set the stage and dive in? All right. Let's do this. So Bones Deep has a wide variety of locations to explore. Uh, however, since this is a tabletop show and we are entertaining the masses, we have to conform to certain cliches and expectations. <laughs> <laughs> we will start in a tavern at the bottom of nice. the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of the barrel is a skeleton run tavern at the bottom of the ocean. About 500 feet below the surface, the barrel is uniquely constructed to have the top half of its main room with air, and then the bottom half is water. So wizards, mermaids, and even the brave uh, mortal can descend and then walk around the barrel, have drinks and food, uh, while still allowing fish to swim <laughs> through the white level water. The main bartender of the barrel is a skeleton named Bert, who has lost his bottom half, and he has strapped himself to a cart that runs on a rail all around the edge of the barrel, and so he serves drinks and food that way. Uh, the barrel's a great place to find work, socialize, 
um, and connect with people. It's sort of a neutral ground between the different factions, and Vert has uh, the ability to either flood the barrel with water or air, depending on who's causing trouble. Uh, so when y'all enter the barrel and grab a seat, Vert comes by and asked if you would like anything to drink. Uh, what's that? Hmm? I just heard a loud noise. I think yeah. that's... I think that's you, David, actually, in Petulant. Huh? Oh. That's the... Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the fish tank or something. That's just the sound of Vert's cart scraping <laughs> on the rail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it gone now? Yes. You're good now. Right. Uh, so Vert puts down a menu, and at the very bottom it says, Skeletons are encouraged to contribute by ordering something, even if they don't partake of food or drink. <laughs> it hurts us to contribute. Aren't we taking... Or is it partaking? What's your strongest drink, pretender? Uh, I've got a hard clam cider. I'll take one. All right. I'll, I have... I'll, I'll take two of those. Okay. Is Can I have... risky here? <laughs> risky? Yeah. No, it's not risky at all. Don't serve risky here? <laughs> no. Off the rails. No, man. I run a clean establishment. Okay. I heard risky is the best drink to have with, with hard <laughs> clam cider. <laughs> Actually, I think I do have some risky in the back. I will be right back with the awesome. clam ciders and a risky. And he, he wheels away. Strange. Uh, Clay, you always order the weirdest drinks. I've never <laughs> heard of this before. I mean, this is uh, all strange. <laughs> when Bert returns, um, he's put a couple glasses on his cart. His cart is right above the water level. So there's no water resistance as he brings the glasses in. And he puts the glasses down on your table. Each... Um, Clam cider has a little clam on the bottom of it. Uh, we lose. Oh, thing in the bottom of the glass. He says, "I think you'll find that pearl to be particularly risky." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's risky about it, but I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, so, Tilly, do you grab the drink before Falcon, or did you both order one? Oh! I mean, I don't want to take yours, Bonehead, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> no, it sounds like you really wanted it. Okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. You just gotta let me know how it tastes. Alright, All right, Clay. Um, so, everybody takes a drink. Uh, you can tell Vert is waiting to see what happens. And in fact, when you turn around, the entire bar is kind of looking up out of their chairs <laughs> to watch Clay drink this drink. I don't understand what's so weird about this. Just I just started drinking. Like <laughs> Alright, straight up. Um when you drink it, this black pearl is extremely heavy with a weight of memories. Uh, like thousands and thousands of years of history are immediately downloaded into your brain and you struggle to sort through it. So I need, I a minute. need you. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Uh, I need you to roll two six-sided dice underneath your luck. Uh, I got a seven. My luck is a and 10. Your luck is a 10. All right, so reduce your luck to nine, and you succeeded. All right. So uh, instead of being overwhelmed 
um, you pick out a few relevant details and you manage to sort of discard the rest. Um, <laughs> uh, you definitely pick up a spell for sure. You roll one. Where's my... I need a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> You roll one, and you get this. You learn the spell Spectral Sea Pig. All right. <laughs> it, it costs two stamina, and it has a skill of two. So you'll add two to your base skill when you use it. Um, and the other thing you get is sort of a. I hesitate to call it a subliminal message because Vert was pretty obvious about it, but it's. Uh, a specific message that he put into the pearl right before he gave it to you. And it basically says that uh, there was a job for talented skeletons from a rather nefarious client who would like to meet you around the back of the bottom of the barrel. Ooh, this is right on my alley. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the bar is waiting for some kind of reaction. What do you show? as you're downloading and sorting thousands of years of information. Uh, the dumbest look you have ever seen in your face. Just like... To... <laughs> <laughs> like a loading, yeah. a loading circle. It's like jaws hanging out yeah. by one uh -huh. side. <laughs> if I could drool, and, uh, the... I would. <laughs> and the whole bar is silent. They're all waiting to see what you'll do. I kind of like snap to and shake my head and as I do you hear this like ting 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 kind of rattling around I'm like guys want to go see someone out back <laughs> <laughs> like this is this is the best idea ever come on this is always going to be good uh, and with <laughs> that Vert says drinks are on me have a good day and wheels away no yeah yeah. It's so like you've never let us wrong before, Clay. Yeah, that's definitely true. They always keep all the interesting <laughs> junk out back too. You right? said no. You said nefarious, right? It's yeah. evil. I'm no, in. Let's. This is exactly what I came here for. We and I take my drinks and I just pour them like through me. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's do this. All right. Uh, so you walk around back to the bottom, the back of the of the barrel, um, and behind the barrel is this six foot tall spider crab. Um, one of its legs has been replaced with like a metal rod, and the rest of its legs are covered in these like sickly looking barnacles, and it's kind of shifting nervously back and forth. Uh, who approaches it first, and what do you say? I'm All gonna hold it. up my, I'm gonna hold up the Ori collar and like look at the collar and to the spider crab and just <laughs> as bonus <laughs> approaches. I'll, I'll approach it. Like, are your legs okay? Uh, the crab emits a series of clicking sounds, and a stream of bubbles comes out of its mouth. You can't I understand. quite make it up. Did I understand that? Uh, do you have a skill? I have a language crab. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> Speak crab. <laughs> of course. So, um, we're going to say that you don't have to roll to understand what they're saying, but you do need to roll to make yourself understood. Okay, sure. So you, you understand it well, but you don't speak it fluently. But it's difficult to do the bubbles when you don't have any organs. Touche. <laughs> uh, so the crab communicates to you that uh, it is looking for a talented group of individuals who can help its master. Oh. I kind of look around and I'm like, in, in crab. <laughs> like, we're pretty talented, you know, for the, the price is right. We'll do any job. You know? All right. Why don't you roll and we'll see what you actually say. Beardice, don't fail me now. Uh, mm. A one. 
<laughs> All right. Oh, you rolled two six-sided dice. Oh, two. <laughs> a six. <laughs> And Total. what is your base skill plus your language? Uh, eight. Oh, no, perfect. seven. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Still, you're below. You're good. Um, you do tell it that you are a talented individual looking for work. Uh, and the crab looks relieved. It stops shifting from side to side, and it kind of settles down on its haunches. Um, it explains to you that, or it says to you, my master is very close to death, and he needs your help. He is trying to repair a vessel, but he lacks the knowledge and equipment to complete the final piece of his instruction. Uh, and he could use a hand in several different ways, whichever you feel most capable. And the crab begins to lift a single leg as it lists off each of the uh, requirements that it's looking for. So one leg goes up and it says, uh, you could visit my master in their lair and help them work on the vehicle yourself directly. You could visit a nearby scrapyard and try to find the information, the missing pieces that he's looking for. Third leg goes up. You could locate a nearby wizard and blackmail them for the information that you need. Uh, I can provide some initial blackmail, but the rest will be up to you. And then as it lifts its fourth leg, the crab like sort of loses its balance and starts to fall over. And as it's falling, it quickly says, or you could go to the pyramid. And then it hits the floor and kind of scrambles to get back up. I had a lot to drink tonight, I think. <laughs> hey. All right, guys. All right, all right. This is what we got. Sounds like there's a master. That guy clearly has money. So we can either go see him and help him out make some machine. I feel like one of us got that. We can go to the scrapyard. I feel like the same person got that. And we can find some parts. <laughs> just there's like my wizard. eyes pockets are just getting wider. <laughs> right? <laughs> you say we can go see a wizard. I mean, wizards don't exist. But like, probably cool. And then, or we could just go to a pyramid. Like Egypt's got to be close by, so like this will be no problem. I mean, if all we have to do is go to a pyramid, that's that's a very simple task. We go there, we say we were there, and then we go back to the master and get money. Yeah, um, and that's what crunch, I should. <laughs> crunch, you are getting some. Uh, very concerned tentacle wiggles from <laughs> Zed, your octopus. Uh, and when it, it touches a tentacle to your shoulder and it says, don't go to the pyramid. You're always... Why don't you want to go to the pyramid? I lower my voice and start having a hushed conversation with it. What about this pyramid do bothers you so much? It's just a shape. It is the culmination of all my people's efforts. So we could learn some nefarious things if we go there, is what you're saying. You will die horribly. We will learn some powerful nefarious things if we go there. Right okay. before you die horribly. Hey, Crunch, is... why are you talking to yourself? I'm talking to Zed. That's very, it's very rude when you don't address Z Zed by... Zed, Zed is a person to own head, okay? Zed, what are, you, what are you talking to... What are you telling Crunch over there? He's, he, he doesn't talk to you, okay? <laughs> 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 Zed is rude. concerned about the pyramid. <laughs> He's concerned that we will learn some very powerful and nefarious things if we go to this pyramid. Something about death, but I that can't be right. I don't know where the pyramid is. I know where the scrapyard is. I do Easy like the sound to. of a wizard as well, though. So. Do you know where a wizard is? Are you asking the crab? 
I, I'm asking um, Crunch specifically. I do not know where the I do you know where a wizard is? Just any wizard. Uh, yeah, Crunch is crab. asking. Crunch is asking Zed if he knows where a oh, wizard is. Oh, Zed. Yeah. Uh, so Zed knows that there are four main wizards. Uh, he knows about the green wizard, the blue wizard, and the other two something something colors. <laughs> um, he knows that the green wizard uh, is near the shore, actually up a, a jungle river into the freshwater. And then the blue wizard is in the bergs. Um, I'm going to turn to um, Preston and say, I know where two wizards are. Where are they? One is in the, the jungle and one is in the burbs. That sounds far away. Mm -hmm. Scrapyard is much closer. Is it though? I don't know. <laughs> I think I think for you, the scrapyard is always closer, but everything else for us is closer. Hmm. Like metaphysically? Yeah. It's just yeah. like it's standing there getting philosophical for the moment. <laughs> bon <laughs> Bonehead, you're always so full of these beautiful thoughts, you know? It's Yes, Preston. The junkyard is always in here. <laughs> and he like points to <laughs> He definitely like points to like a spot on your body that's like been like has like some sort of junk on it. <laughs> um you see Clay Vackle starts patting his chest like over his heart, and then he comes out and there's this just like heart in his hand. And he just starts <laughs> like, ah! and then he goes back. That was okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I think you had... No, wait, you haven't had enough risky yet. Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so we're going to the junkyard, is that correct? Do we... Wait, do we need to achieve else, all right? of these objectives? Or just one I of want, them? I wonder if we get more points and more gold for doing all of the things on the list. Maybe we do it really fast. Maybe we all split up and we all yes. do... <laughs> <laughs> we each do I'll one. Run, I'll run two hours with each of you over the next <laughs> day and a half. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, okay, let's put this um, to a vote. We're all smart people. Everybody want to go to the scrapyard? Everybody want to go? Oh, we got two for the scrapyard. How about the wizard? You see, you see Zed hold up like eight tentacles for the, I mean, the wizard. The tentacles have it. I mean, that's way more votes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you counting the number of raised bones or the number of raised limbs? I'm going to say limbs because bones are hard. <laughs> yes, bones are hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. True. <laughs> True. All right. Uh, if we're going with wizard, you have a few options. Um, Zed knows where two of them are. The crab knows where the other two are. So let's see. Uh, the red wizard is located in the sulfur spires. And the purple wizard is currently incarcerated in the haunted library. I like the sound of that. And the crab, did you tell us that the crab said something about um, blackmail? Yes. So the blackmail slash information that all the wizards will be interested to know is that the purple wizard is the one who cursed them. And that won't be blackmail to the purple wizard as much of a threat that you'll tell the other wizards. So what so we've if... got the green wizard in the jungle, the blue wizard in the bergs, the red wizard in the spires, or the purple wizard in the haunted library. What do y'all think? 
Haunted library. I mean, yeah. The haunted yeah. library sounds pretty <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, the spider crab sort of shakes its limbs excitedly. I will return to my master and tell them that you are engaging on the mission to blackmail slash rescue the purple wizard from the haunted library. Is there anything you wish to tell my master who is, like I said, very close to death? Uh, oh, what is... Oh, go ahead. Is your master human? Skeleton? I'm tra translating. <laughs> yeah. No, no, let's have Tilly repeat everything I say to Val and repeat everything I say back in character. <laughs> <laughs> he forgets Add to stop out. speaking Add about <laughs> We've got three hours to kill. True. <laughs> no, that's fine. So what was your question, Bonehead? Um is your is your master a human or a skeleton would uh you mind if is mm. that okay to ask? Um The spider replies that my master is as human as you are. It's pretty human then. <laughs> very. Yeah, very human. That's obvious. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is acceptable. How do we tell you when we're done? Uh, when you have the information required, or even better, if you can convince the wizard to join you, uh, simply return to my master's lair at the sunken barge. Okay. And I reach out my hand to like shake his hand. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, the crab lifts up all three of its limbs and begins to topple over as it grabs <laughs> onto you. I tried, man. I don't know. I'm, this is awkward. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's go visit the haunted library. So, looking on the map, from the bottom of the barrel, uh, the haunted library is pretty close. So you can either skim the shoreline or try and head directly through some dangerous territory to the haunted library. Because the deeper waters is where more things are. Near the shoreline, it might be a little bit less populated. What do y'all want to do? There's usually more good junk near the shore. Mm. Yeah, and if we're at the shoreline, you know, maybe we can talk to the green wizard first. And, and see we can if... work on our tans. Mm. I do need to work <laughs> on my tan. I'm very pale right now. I'm saying I think I could use a good bleaching. <laughs> it, Clay could um, use some fresh air, too. Mm -hmm, uh, definitely. Clay, I, uh, I couldn't help but notice you are very good at speaking to crabs. Is that a thing that all humans can do? Uh, crabs, you mean like French, right? Is that what that is called? Oh, that's what I was speaking, French. Very bubbly uh, and strange language. <laughs> I did not know that crabs speak French, and I've known plenty of crabs in my time. That is mm. very interesting. So was that... I is that a French Rangoon? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, so on the mainland, you actually use the wine to make the bubbles. You bubble it out of your mouth, but underwater. <laughs> I think I'll offend somebody if I keep making jokes. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's see what you bump into on the way to the show. Um, as skeletons, you experience the ocean in a different way than most um, underwater denizens. You are trapped on the ocean floor. You cannot swim. Your bones are too heavy. You don't have any buoyancy. So while other creatures can swim above you freely, you are always walking along the bottom. Um, just like that scene from Pirates of the Caribbean. Sweet. 
which basically inspired this entire book. Don't tell Disney. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Roll to see what you bump into. Okay. So the shoreline uh, is described from the perspective of an ocean dweller. So what it really looks like is a hundred foot tall cliff leading up to the surface. And then you can see the light shining through far above you. Um, if you climbed all the way up top, you would experience the shore that the land dwellers know, which is shallow water. And then you could walk onto the surface and terrify some poor human. But from your perspective, you're walking along like a tall cliff. Um, and creatures swim above you. You can see the waves crashing from underneath. Uh, and the, your view of the cliff is broken by some obstruction hanging along the side, maybe about 50 or 60 feet above you. And as you get closer, you see that um, an old wooden clipper ship is hanging on the cliff. Its sails have gotten tangled in some rocks and protrusions. And the whole ship is like hanging by the sails, leaning against the side of the cliff. And you can see it sway slightly in the ocean current. Um, what do you all want to do? Crunch. Yes. Is this your old ship? Do you think we can travel faster if we use it? I look it over. That is a beautiful ship. I wish that I had a ship like that in my glory days, but sadly, no. Um, I don't think that is in working order, Bonehead. You are such a bonehead sometimes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> an optimist. Just an optimist. <laughs> Maybe we could ride that ship to the moon. Hey. Wait, there's someone here who might be able to fix it. And then we can ride it. That is very true. I take back those remarks, but, um... <laughs> It's I'm gotta gonna be have interesting. To talk, I'm gonna have to talk to Zed about kind of. He was also calling you a bit of a bonehead just now. Do you think you can fix that ship so that we can use it again? Do I think that I can fix that ship? <laughs> Preston, this <laughs> is like if somebody brings you a bucket of sand and says, Can you fix my computer? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm gonna look it up you? and down and said, <clears throat> "All right, so here's the thing, and this is if I can get my guys to agree to work. I mean, you're looking at 200 years of water <laughs> damage here, and there's sand everywhere. So I mean, we're gonna look at it. We're gonna need like an excavator, and if that's if we can get it all together, it's gonna take me maybe ugh, 200 years. But yeah, I can do it. Hey, the sand oh, makes a nice crunch." Right. Hmm. Hold on, I got an idea. I got an idea. And I just like pick up a rock and try to throw it at the boat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best idea I got, guys. It's gonna work. No problem. Um so because of water resistance, you're gonna have to chuck that rock really hard to get it. <laughs> We're not underwater. Up in I don't understand. <laughs> you wanna try and like super strength it up there, or do you just watch it go three feet and then fall back down? Uh, probably that one, yeah. <laughs> a really heavy rock. <laughs> like a fish swims right in front of you. <laughs> you do realize you are underwater right now. Oh, uh, no, it's fine. No, no. <laughs> it's just crazy. No, no, can't be true. Can't be true. <laughs> she would have done that um, to me, right? Do y'all want to try and climb up onto this wreck or keep things moving along? Wait, come on, let's at least take a look at it. Yeah, I kind of want to see the boat. Maybe you can find a better hat there, Crunch. But if we could find the spare parts that we're looking for, then we don't have to deal with any wizards at all. I mean, we could have just gone to the junkyard for that, like I had suggested. <laughs> You say the craziest thing. Preston. 
If only someone had mentioned the junkyard. Okay. God. <laughs> He's also going to uh, pull out a book. Um, this is a book you've probably seen Bonehead write in many times. Um, if if Crunch could narrow his eyes at the moment, you get the sense that that's what he would be doing. And he looks directly at Preston at that comment, writes a name in his book, shuts it, and puts it back away. And you just, like, I'm looking at you and I see Zed's tentacles just kind of like... Over <laughs> yeah, he's at the back of my head, <laughs> going like that. <laughs> Do you wear Zed as a hat? Is Zed your captain's hat? Is that that is always just like crawling around on me, I imagine. <laughs> um so are we going to try and climb up? Yeah, you, gonna, is gonna, um Crunch yeah. gonna send a, a a pet to go look at the ship? What do you wanna what are y'all thinking? Um I think yeah Crunch will say, You go on up there and I will kind of guide uh Ray towards it. Um, but we'll be yeah. right behind you, and he's gonna try to help somebody up. He he just like puts out his hands expectantly for someone to climb up. <laughs> so, question: um, When when I was making my character, I think we were saying that we we're doing like the reverse of the parasite table, saying I had all those abilities, right? Yep. So I am going to uh, use my launching tail to launch to into the boat. And are you going to do that alongside um, Crunch's Ray going up there, or are you ignoring the Ray and taking the initiative? That's sort of like, you know, I imagine Ray was going up there first. It's like okay. as, soon as, as soon as Crunch is like, here, have a hand to help you get up, I'm just going <laughs> to launch up there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Crunch, do you want to command Ray to go swim up there? Yeah. Ray, you go have a look. And you tell me what you find. So you're going to spend two stamina. Yes. And then you're going to roll two six-sided dice underneath your skill plus your command. Hmm. That I rolled a 12. Um, and I definitely uh, have a six in my command creature, so. All right. So, when you fail, oh. uh, your ray is startled, um, partially by Bonehead's sudden leap and <laughs> partially by uh, the conflict between you and Zed, Ray feels like Zed's your favorite because you can talk to Zed and you can't really talk to Ray. Um, <laughs> and so Ray goes off to sulk for a little while. Uh, uh, he'll be back maybe in an hour or so, but he leaves to go figure things out, process some difficult fish emotions, and he'll be back later. Well, not that way, this Ray. Oh no. Oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bonehead, you launch up there and you land alone. Uh, there's no ray to be found. Um so this clipper ship is is a a little smaller than than like a full fledged galleon or anything like that. There's maybe 50, 60 feet long and 20 feet wide, something like that. Uh, along the deck are a couple boxes, and you can see steps leading down into a cargo hold. Um, even just standing on the deck, you can feel it sway a little bit, and you can hear the stretching of the uh, sails as your weight puts more pressure on it. What do you want to do? Um... How far up am I compared to everybody else right now? About 60 feet. Okay. Um, uh, is there like a captain's quarters that I can see like I can walk to? 
Yeah, so the cargo hold goes down to the second floor, but the captain's quarters are right on the op op opposite side, on the same deck. It's a small little uh, room. Yeah, well, I'm going to see if I can find anything in there. Okay. All right. Um, you go up to the captain's quarters, and as you reach for the handle, you hear sort of a thump come from the inside of the room. And then there's like a clatter, like a bunch of plates falling. Do you still want to open the door? Of going in here by myself is the best idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there like a coil of rope that I can find? The tricky thing is that some of these ropes are supporting the ship. And if you uncoil the wrong rope, the entire thing will fall down. Foolproof plan, so, do it. That will be exactly what I wanted. <laughs> uh, I think you're, you're going to make a luck check to see if you grab the right rope. Is How far up is roll... it again? Hmm? How far up is it again? About 60 feet. Okay. Is it 2d6 for the luck? Yep, 2d6 underneath your current luck. Okay. That is a six. When my luck is eight, so it's now seven, right? Yep, exactly. And you succeed. All right. So you unwrap <clears throat> maybe 30 feet of rope. No problem. And then I'm going to, I don't know, try to tie it somewhere. And it's like, hey, use this. Oh, to bring them up? Yeah. Ooh. You're going to need another 30 feet of rope to make it all the way down, unless they can jump 30 feet high and grab it. Um, <laughs> I could try. <laughs> I have an idea. I don't know what it's going to do, but I kind of want to see what's going to happen. So seeing that, I'm going to get an idea. I'm going to take my hubcap off of my head. I'm going to put it on the ground, stand on it. I'm going to kind of arrange it so that I'm like on an arc with the ship, and I'm going to cast Torpedo Throw on the hubcap and hope it launches me up there. <laughs> I see no problems with this plan. No. <laughs> <Best>. <laughs> so Torpedo Throw costs one stamina. I'm down to 20. So the text says you throw your weapon at a target and it propels itself forward at great speed, dealing its damage to the target. Uh, you must recover the weapon afterwards. So I'm wondering, someone has to give you a push. You can't push yourself, but if somebody gives you a little bit of a push, mm. it will launch you upward. Uh, but if you fail this roll, you will launch the shield into their face. <laughs> So who's going to take this? I got this. this. I got this, man. You need a hand there? Hey, Clay, give, give me a little push here. Give me a little push. Oh, I have an idea. I got this. Okay. <laughs> All right, Preston, let's see what you can roll. So I'm rolling my spell skill plus my base, and I want to get under that. You want to get under that? Yep. All right. Special bones <laughs> deep dice. Don't it's kill me bad. now. <laughs> um, so my total is a seven and I got a six. Oh, perfect. You're good. <laughs> awesome. Ooh, that five on that one die made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, play, it's almost like you lift a little bit and then it shoots off on its own. Um, Why does everybody have like jet packs? Like where's all the, like, <laughs> Uh, launching clay upwards um, you like press the lip of the ship and then come down hard and the whole ship rocks a little bit as you come down uh, the noise coming from the captain's cabin is louder something is banging on the inside of the door I can't believe that works <laughs> Bonehead, you and Clay are now on the deck of the ship. What do y'all want to do? I think... What's that noise? I don't know. I didn't want to go in there by myself. You never know. 
Um, is it possible for me to drop my useless tail stump and have someone else use it? Ooh, I don't think so. That's pretty attached. Okay. Um, I have gliding wings. Mm -hmm. Can I drop those? Or are those also attached? <laughs> those are also attached. <laughs> so yep. many things are attached. Yeah, the, uh, the infestation inside of you has morphed your body for its own purposes. Um, I can carry someone with the useless tail stump. Well, let's see who's in the door. Maybe they're just stuck. Okay, I guess we should, we should look at this first. I'll Sorry, like, yeah. guys. I'll just like wave, like what? climb up here. <laughs> yeah, there's thirty feet of rope hanging down. You just gotta jump that last thirty feet to grab oh, it. I mean, this isn't a trench, but I've got trench jumping, like Ooh. cliff jumping. Could. Maybe I could try that. I think you're at the bottom of a trench, so this counts. Okay. It work. never says the top. <laughs> it says a trench. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see if you can do that. Make a roll for it. Uh, Six. And my base skill is six plus two for you're trench good. jumping. Nice. Yeah. So I'm like, All I right. got this. I just get like a running start. I'm like, <laughs> slow man run in the water for a second then somehow like leap I don't know I'm as confused no. as you guys are <laughs> you scramble up the side of the shoreline like maybe 5 or 10 oh. feet then you jump off of that cool that's where your trench leaping skills come into play nice and you grab onto the rope when you grab onto the rope the whole ship again rocks a little bit more as more and more weight is added to it um, you know, I shouldn't have had lunch. <laughs> it's all that clam um, cider. Mm -hmm. Zed, Crunch, do you looks... want to try and get up there, or are you going to wait for them? Um, I'm just going to turn to Zed and be like, um, Zed, can you help me with this? I Would you be able to swim up there with me? I, I know this is a big ask, and I know that... Um, well, I know that you get upset when Ray gets upset, and I don't want to put too much pressure on you. Oh. Uh, so Zed let's see how long have you had Zed um I would say they've been together for maybe three years or so okay okay um trying to think if there's a spell or ability Zed might know why don't you make a luck check? Let's see if uh, let's see if you get lucky and Zed knows something that can help you. That would be a nine, and my luck is ten. Wow. So yeah, you reduce your luck by one now that you've okay. used it, uh, but you succeed. I'm gonna say that Zed knows the teleport spell. Alrighty. Um, Teleport is a lot more dangerous underneath the water. When you disappear, it creates a vacuum, and when the water collapses in on it, it creates this big explosion that is quite dangerous. Um, and when you appear, likewise, you push the water out of the way, it creates another wave and explosion. So you're going to teleport to a fragile unstable hanging ship that already has too much weight on it. Perfect. Is this what you want to yes. do? Like, <laughs> above it a little bit? <laughs> Let's rock the boat. Once again, Zed communicates that this is a terrible idea. You're always so worried, like Zed. The only thing he ever says now as you get more and more <laughs> reckless. Uh, but he goes for it. He spends some stamina Um Heck, let me tell you what, how much health uh, Zed has, just so you know. Do you know what kind of octopus Zed is? Ah, uh, that is a good question. <laughs> Would you care to give me a uh, 
suggestion. I'm checking. Uh, we've got a giant cuttlefish, uh, a heptopus, a Humboldt squid, a red octopus, um, yes. a red octopus, a red octopus. Yep, the red octopuses are intelligent, and there's even a cool movie on Netflix about a diver who has a red octopus that's his friend. I watched that one. Yes. Good. Uh, so yeah, so you're Red Octopus, and also thank you, chat, for all the bits and resubs. You guys are awesome. Hi, pipe. Uh, so your Red Octopus has ten stamina. All right. Thank you. I'll keep track of that too. So. Um, Anyway, Zed spends three stamina to teleport. You disappear in a flash. There's a muffled boom, and then an echo of rippling water. And when you appear, the ship rocks violently. It gets propelled away from the trench and then slowly <laughs> slams back into the side of it. And the whole thing shakes. You hear like sort of a ripping sound as the sails start to tear. And you only have maybe five to ten minutes before this whole thing comes crashing down. Uh, by this point, the beating coming from inside the captain's cabin is loud and panicked. I'm gonna try what do y'all want to do? The door. Uh, the door is locked quite solidly. Can I try to disassemble the door using taking things apart? Am I the only one not up top now? <laughs> uh, no, you climbed up. You did your trench jumping. Right, that's right. Clay, still hanging on the rope. rope. Okay. Clay, you <laughs> haven't had too much risky yet. True. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you can definitely try to take apart the door. You want to give it a roll? Yeah. All right. Um, my skill is uh, my total is ten, and I rolled a seven. Perfect. All right. So, um, you find some of the hinges along the side and they put the hinges on the outside they're able to pop them up pretty easily as soon as you pop the hinges off uh you immediately feel pressure coming from the other side of the door as whatever is trapped inside is desperately trying to escape are you going to push back and keep it closed or step out of the way how do you want to handle it? i think i'm gonna i'll jump to the side okay all right um, what's in the box? As soon as you jump to the side, uh, you see, like, uh, what looks like a large fish moving quickly, pushes out of it, a pair of hands emerge first, uh, a woman's face with long, like, flowing kelp hair, and then a, uh, shark tail with the sideways fins, uh, emerges from the door and immediately swims around and circles the ship. Um, she's singing something in some language you don't understand, uh, but appears delighted and relieved to be out of there. Um, I want to imitate the song. I want to use my spell imitate. Oh, okay. Let me see what imitate does. While this is happening, I'm gonna like put my crowbar down and like push it under like some cloth or something. <laughs> so imitate allows you to use an ability of a creature that you're currently touching, um, including another skeleton. So you have to imitate something that you're touching. Um can I I want to ask the mermaid, can I take your hand? Ooh, okay. Yeah, so the ship is shaking, sails are ripping, uh, the whole thing is coming down, the mermaid swings back around, um, and she opens her arms wide and like, like blows you a kiss from up above. Um, 
Bonehead reaches his hand up and she comes back down and you clasp hands. Uh, do you want to try and exchange memories and communicate or do you just want to hold this pretty girl's hand for a while? I was, so I wasn't sure if I could imitate the song she was singing using that spell oh, or not. Right, now you can, yes, now that you've touched her hand. Okay. Uh, yeah, so imitate, what did I say that called? Costs two stamina. And then you need to roll below your skill with two six-sided dice. Let's see if you can do that. All right, so that's a total of... Mm. I rolled a three, and my base skill was five plus one is six. Okay. Is that below? Yes. Okay, sweet. I get lost in the math. Yeah, no I worries. Forget. All right. Um, so you began to sing a song that resonates uh, it actually is pure and magical and it horrifies and repels your infestation um, you can mark off two of your infested abilities and recover some stamina and some luck because you are now performing your drive, which is to get rid of your infestation. Um, awkwardly, the song you're singing is about how you are a beautiful mermaid named Vivian uh, who finally escaped her confinement, and you're so glad to be free. This speaks to my heart. <laughs> I am a beautiful mermaid named Vivian. <laughs> Uh, which two infested abilities did you get rid of, out of curiosity? Um, we will say the uh, stronger bones, which would have given me maximum and current stamina, because I never bothered to mark that off. And <laughs> the... Um, ah, these are such good ones. The whispering voices in the back of my mind. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. All right. So yeah, the, the sort of background you've heard so long is cut off when you start to sing this song. And you feel the creature within you like retreat a little bit in the face of this beautiful, magical resonance. <laughs> uh, while the mermaid and Bonehead are having this beautiful moment, the rest of you are getting a little nervous. Uh, the ship is shaking, the sails are tearing, um, you've only got maybe four or five minutes for the whole thing. Okay. Since we have a minute to kill, uh, I'm going to do a little peek behind the curtain so y'all can see what I'm dealing with on my end. Um, Bones Deep includes uh, a bunch of locations and creatures and items that you are encouraged to sort of throw together however you want. Uh, but it also includes five or six stories that you can play through, something to get you started, get your characters hooked, and encourage you to get wrapped up in the world. Um, the stories that we chose to play today is to get to the moon and join the Skeleton War, which I'm sure they will accomplish soon. <laughs> um, and in fact, the mermaid, Vivian, that we bump into is from another story where she's looking for her lost skeleton lover, and you have to reunite them. And there's a lot of involvement with some spells and some rituals, because skeletons can't feel love. So you have to figure out a way to help her, her lover love in order for them to be together. So in another reality, that's the adventure we would have done. So I was glad I was able to bring Vivian in to have a cameo. Uh, <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's uh, just a bunch of the stuff that's included in the book, and I'm excited to, to see if we make it to the moon today. So, let's get back to this rickety ship that is about to fall from its outcrop on the canyon wall. Uh, right now, Bonehead and the mermaid named Vivian are having a like very picturesque moment, a beautiful connection of souls, 
uh, while the rest of you are nervously trying to figure out what to do next about this collapsing ship beneath mm -hmm. you. What's the plan? What are we thinking? I have an idea. Uh oh. Why did I come up here? This whole place is about to come crashing down. It was fine, exact, yes, it was fine until you exploded up here. Are you saying this is my fault, Preston? That is a wild accusation. I am implying that it is your fault. I'm not directly accusing you. That um, is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see if I can kick, like, one of these crates off of the ship, and then I'm going to... This is not gonna work. I'm gonna jump off of the ship, and I've got a I've got listed on my sheet that I have a sun visor, um, and I'm gonna open it up and try and like parasail away on this sun visor. Uh, you have a sun visor or an umbrella? I I changed it to be a sun visor to be thematic. Nice. <laughs> Even better. Perfect. I love it. Um. Oh, yeah. Inside the crates... So, two of the crates are open. Um, one of them has uh, small, like, sealed boxes, and written across the top is the word E. Um, and then there's the logo for the East India Trading Company on a few of those. The down here a minute. <laughs> and then... Um, the box that you're interested in is not like a, a wooden box. It's actually this like leather satchel that's covered in sort of a, some kind of grease or something that protects whatever's inside. And when you pick it up, it it has like a bit of a lumpy texture. Like there's a bunch of round balls inside, maybe 30 or 40. Um, so you, you can lift it up and feel the weight of that. Are you just going to kick the bag over? Or are you going to try to protect it? Um, if it's if it's small enough that I can put, maybe I'll like tie it to one of my ribs or something, and then go it's off. Like a sack of potatoes is okay. kind of what I'm. Um. Is there any way I could affix it to myself? You just have to grab hold, like hold on to it. Unless you want to yeah. try and invent a gadget real quick. Um, it takes like an hour. I just like <laughs> shove it in my ribs and hope that it stays. <laughs> um, you hear like a popping noise as a few of the balls break when uh, you shove them in there. But maybe three-fourths of them are still good. Okay, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then you jump off the side. I've never done this before! <laughs> Why don't you make a luck roll to see how that goes? Oh boy. <laughs> oh, that, my friends, is going to be an 11. All right. My luck was nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. You see, you rolled above? I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. All right, so you've got two choices here. You can use the bag of strange balls as a cushion, breaking every, breaking all of them, but protecting yourself. Or you can let your bones take the brunt of the impact and protect your cargo. Um, have I fallen from a height such as this before? <laughs> you probably have when you first hatched and fell into the ocean. Hmm. This would be a unpleasant but survivable fall. Yes. By my so estimate. Right. And because you don't have any buoyancy, you're falling much faster than a human body would through the through the water. So yeah. you'll hit with a good amount of force. Ah, let's go for it. I want to know what's in the bag. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you take five stamina damage. Ooh. All right. Uh, <laughs> what is Clay doing? Uh, Clay is frantically looking around for Squid. <laughs> for Zed? What? Like, is there any, for like a squid. Is there any squids like floating around or swimming around? Uh, Zed is the closest thing to a squid at this depth. Mm. 
Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, what I'll do is, um, I'm just going to try to like repel off the boat, like just kind of hold onto the rope and just like run off the side and then like try to get like a swing down so I can kind of like run along the cliff back to the ground. If I can manage somehow. <laughs> Is he going to try and use your trench leaping ability again? Uh, or just trench falling ability? You know, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to do Indiana Jones style. You know what I mean? Just like swing it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah let's, let's see what happens. Uh, make a luck save or a luck check. Let's see if you can uh, protect yourself. Uh, I rolled a nine and my luck's a nine. Oh, then you're good. <laughs> yep. Um, reduce your luck by one. And uh, yeah, using your your knowledge of trenches, you hang on the rope and use it to sort of slow your fall. I like that cool superhero thing where they grab yeah, onto yeah. The, out of the wall and slide. No, down. no, no, not the grab. My the knife comes out of my boot. <laughs> oh yeah, and then I use yeah. that to like slow myself down. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so the rope is being used. Uh, Crunch, how are you going to get down? Um, I feel like my answer is going to be the same either way, but I want to ask a clarifying question of how feasible would it be for me to use said as like a parachute? That's what I wanted to do! <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it doesn't work, other... I tried it! <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the interesting things about Bones Deep is that about 90% of it is based off of real sea creatures and real ocean life. We just sprinkle on a layer of magical nonsense on top of everything. So I'm going to look up how big a red octopus really is. Pretty big. See if it would be big enough to help you. Come on, Google. Uh, Don't mess me over. <laughs> red octopuses have a length of 30 to 40 centimeters. Uh, that is not going to be a huge help. This is a tiny little guy. <laughs> so, uh, then get, get ready to lecture me again about this really stupid idea. <laughs> um, um. <laughs> Zed could use teleport again if you can command him to do so. I think what I would like to do is have it be like that is the smarter one out of them and um mm. so crudge is like i got this idea and like gets him on like a backpack but um in doing so uh is like trying to tell zed about how this is going to work and zed maybe decides to teleport them down to the ground even though it <laughs> might be encouraging <laughs> okay. yeah that, that makes a lot more sense Okay. All right. So Zed spends another three. Um, Zed only has four stamina left. Um, okay. But he teleports both of you closer to the ocean floor. Uh, unfortunately, when you teleport away, like I said, there's this big shockwave <laughs> and explosion, and the ship begins to fall rapidly. Bonehead, oh, you are holding on to Vivian. Um, I guess what I'm wondering is do you trust her to hold you or would you let go and try to grab onto a side and scramble or would you keep your trust in her to make this moment even more majestic I am going to spread my gliding wings So I want, there's this like beautiful vignette. The camera is close in on um, Vivian and, and Bonehead with their arm clasped with each other. And it's like from above slightly, you see the ship begin to fall away, but Bonehead and Vivian don't move at all. They remain stationary floating in the ocean and Bonehead's wings extend into this like angelic pose. Um, there's probably some kind of music playing in the background. There's like a bunch of fan art being made of it in this very moment. <laughs> Crunches, crunches writing, like 
scribbling this in his book of names. <laughs> There's going to be a compilation on YouTube later of this moment. It's beautiful. And with the gliding wings deployed, Vivian is able to very easily both of you drift down to the ground safely. <laughs> um, after Vivian touches down, she slowly releases your arm. She waves and blows a kiss and swims away. That lady had a really nice <laughs> dress on. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like the little thing at the bottom? It was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bonehead, how do you feel about permanently keeping the ability to sing Vivian's song as a way to drive the infested away? I love it. I am a beautiful mermaid named Vivian. <laughs> So why don't you write down Vivian's song as a new skill that you've learned? Um, and it has a value of two. And you can use that in the future to drive your parasite away. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I was I was going to suggest it anyway. It's sort of like an, as the encouraged parasite, but more like discouraged parasite. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. All right. Uh, so as you stand in this pile of rubble, the ship is destroyed, huge like pile of junk and cinders. Um, Bonehead has hope to rid themselves of the skeleton for the first time. Preston has some sort of valuable material, and Crunch <laughs> has lost a ray, and Clay, <laughs> Clay has managed to survive. Yes. Okay. This is Looking the like a superhero. <laughs> um, Preston, do you want to take a moment and examine what's inside the bag, or are you going to wait until later? I would like to see what's inside the bag. So, uh, are you going to open it here with the water everywhere, or are you going to leave it sealed? Oh, it, it's like sealed up, sealed up. It even has, like, a layer of grease around the outside of it to keep water from getting it. All right, I'll probably wait till we find some air. Okay. There's a little bit of, like, a jangle as something inside is broken, and, like, the shards have collected on the bottom. Um, all right, but yeah, you move on from the, the shipwreck, the recently caused shipwreck. This is the only ship that's wrecked twice, I think. It wrecked once... <laughs> and then you all just wreck it again. New record. Um, let's just New like record. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. I see you. I see no. you. I see you. Beautiful. And uh, I think with that... I see myself out. <laughs> uh, we're going to have y'all approach the haunted library. I think on their way there, um, Crunch... Uh, is kind of humming this like Vivian song um, like yeah Vivian and then turns towards Bonehead do you think that mermaid's name was Ori by chance no you don't think so <laughs> who is Ori <sighs> We'll find out one day, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, the haunted library, you see its glow far before you can make out its structure. And there's this sort of shifting, pulsing green glow that can be seen for miles and miles around. The ocean floor is pretty uh, wavy, this close to the shoreline, um, and there's the occasional outcropping or wreck, so it's kind of hard to see too far ahead, but for miles around the library, the ground is perfectly flat, like poured concrete, and the green light just washes over you. And as you get closer and closer, you can make out this 10-foot tall building under, at the very bottom of the ocean. Uh, by this point, you're a thousand feet underwater. It's very dark. The glow is even brighter by contrast. Um, 
You can make out some uh, like Roman columns. It has sort of that diamond shape uh, that a lot of Roman architecture had at the time. And the green glow is coming from all of the windows. Every window is covered by this shimmering green field. Uh, and there's like a sort of a carved walkway that leads you to the front door, up the steps to these huge um, stone doors that are maybe 30 feet high. They have tiny little handles, like normal sized handles on the front. <laughs> uh, and inscribed in the doors are the library rules. And they are as follows. Rule one. Entry is prohibited unless visitors donate a new book. Rule two, no outside food or drink. Rule three, no talking except to a librarian. Rule four, donors may peruse the shelves until closing time, and the library closes whenever it pleases. Uh, rule five is that books are not to be removed from the library. And rule six is that any violation of these rules is punishable by eternal employment. And then in the middle, right below that last rule is a little slot that says donations. And it's big enough for like a large uh. encyclopedia. I have just the thing. You do? And as Bonehead says that, he pulls out his book of self-deprecating jokes. <laughs> and if if you were to open up the book, it's it's got like one single page, and it just says bonehead. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <Sad>. <laughs> so he. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go for it. Oh. And he he puts the book into the slot. All right. I feel like this is just the next step of bonehead. Becoming a better person mm -hmm. is giving up the self-deprecating opinion of himself. <laughs> uh, so the little metal slot slams shut after the book has been donated, and both of the doors slowly creak open wide. Um, as they open, the same green field that was over the windows is between the two doors uh, leading into the library. Who's the first to go through it? One head will just walk right in. All right. Let's see. Checking something. I'm not planning anything nefarious, I promise. Sus. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh,. Bonehead, as soon as the door is wide enough for a skeleton to pass through, Bonehead steps through. And as you pass through the shimmering green field, it absorbs all the moisture and you pass through into a dry, air-filled environment. And the water is held behind you, just like uh, the Gungan energy fields from the prequels. So you like pass through it and it sucks all the moisture off of you as you step inside. Great movies. <laughs> no flaws at all. <laughs> the rest of this will be just like the episode, just like the prequels. So Perfect. we'll meet Boss Nass. <laughs> we'll, uh... <laughs> um, so yeah, you, the rest of you see Bonehead pass through and sort of turn around unharmed. The green field is semi-transparent as well. One of the rules said no outside food or drink. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so Crunch is going to follow, but first he like digs, uh, digs a little hole just outside the door in the sand, takes out some of the fish food that he has on him. I'm sorry, Zed, but I need to leave your snacks out here, and just like covers it up, and then walks through. You probably need to leave Zed too. I am sorry, Zed. I'm going to have to leave you. You might, you are unfortunately considered, you know what? We'll have this conversation later. Maybe go find Ray. 
Well, I just didn't mean that Zed can't breathe air. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know if Zed's considered outside food. I mean, it really depends <laughs> on your perspective, I guess. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think, does anyone else have anything that might be ruined by contact with air? I don't think so. My rotting heart will definitely be okay. <laughs> Probably be That's better for no. it, honestly. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, perfect. So the rest of you pass through the green field into the library. Um... Along the sides of the walls are rows and rows of books. Um, the, the library goes up about 10 stories, and you can see books all the way back, rows and rows. Um, more disturbingly, as you get closer into the room, there's a little railing. When you look down, you can see the library also goes down for hundreds of stories, infinite spiral of books going down forever and ever. Um, and on the other side of that infinite spiral heading down is a desk with reception over it. On that desk, there's a man, oh, a silhouette, really, uh, sort of a glowing, semi-transparent purple figure that has their legs up on the desk and a book over their face. And they seem to be napping. Who is the first to disrupt this creature's sleep? Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Are you knocking on the desk or on their head? On the desk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you knock on the desk. Uh, you hear sort of a muffled... What? We're here looking for a wizard. Um, the being up behind the desk sort of pauses for a second, lifts the book off of their face, and you see they are somewhat of an older looking man with a long beard. Their robe is uh, like covered in these purple stars. And they have sort of a ghostly transparent figure. Um, they take the book off of their face. The book has uh, an idiot's guide to dating, or sorry, a wizard's guide to dating. Um, and then they reach down and pull oh, off God. this long pointy hat. It like, has a star that dangles on the inside and they put it on their head. And they say, why do you think there's a wizard here? I, I, I don't think there is one, but like you fit the bill, buddy. <laughs> no? not a wizard now i'm just a simple librarian my wizard oh. days are over as long as i'm trapped here oh thank goodness i was trying to figure out how to ask you if you were a librarian without talking and breaking the rules oh yeah crap that's happened to a few people a couple of the librarians here asked a question to another guest and were immediately employed Um, so what books are you looking for? <laughs> uh, are we? Yes. <laughs> Clay is confused. You can't talk to each other. You can only talk to the, to the wizard. <laughs> we are looking for how to free a wizard from eternal imprisonment here. Uh, there's another awkward pause. Of course. Follow me. Uh, and the wizard walks you into this, like, isolated corner of the library and immediately turns around. Who are you? What are you doing here? I am Bonehead. I am here to find a wizard to help us in our task. <laughs> You're not very subtle, are you? You can't talk about <laughs> rescuing me in the same place that I'm being held captive. Too late. <laughs> 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 
I just wanted to read a book titled that. <laughs> uh, without breaking eye contact, the wizard disbelievingly reaches over and grabs a book and hands it to you. Here's the book you requested. Now let's talk about getting me out of here. What's your plan? <laughs> oh, and the book he handed you is named The Rise and Fall of the Decapod Empire. A good book. <laughs> um, I think. Is, it, is everybody else here? Is it just Bonehead? All four of you are there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, oh, I've got a great idea. Hmm? They can't imprison you here if you're dead. Uh, the wizard gestures to his semi-transparent state. I'm kind of a ghost. Oh my exactly. god. Ghosts are very spooky. I... If, if, I you, heard. if you pass over, right? Then, then you're no longer here. And then they can't... You know... Right, but I, I can't pass over until I get out of the building. I'm stuck here. Unless oh, you can somehow grab my body and take it out of here. Where's that? Mm. Uh, oh, you want to see the special collections, sir? Of course. Yes, I'm I'm such, a, what he said. Oh. such a prestigious donor. And... It, it's like the wizard is, is talking to the shelves like up above. I'll take you to the special collections that you specifically requested to see. And he begins to lead you down the staircase um, into like a, a side room. Uh, he opens up the door and this room is uh, it, look, it looks like a morgue. Basically, it's a lot colder than the rest of the library. It has sort of the spooky fog. And just like in the library, there's rows and rows of cadavers on shelves. And the wizard starts to walk through the shelves. Because I don't quite remember which one is mine. Um, could I start... Uh, could this translate to... Uh, this particular moment in that I I have a foraging ability. Could I look around for like tags that might like or, or anything that might match this person? Yes, that's a great idea. Um, so a lot of these bodies have decayed despite their preservation. Um, so and you can't tell what clothes they're wearing. So you'll be looking for distinctive wizardly marks. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see if you can roll underneath your foraging skill. That's a great idea. Yep. Uh, that would be a six, and my foraging is a five. <laughs> okay. So you have two choices here. One is you can... Your character can be mistaken... Mm -hmm. uh, or two, you can search for a while and give up and let somebody else do it. Which one do you want to go with? Like, would your character be the person who picks somebody and just commit to it? Yes, I think so. I I find I find a body um, really like indistinguishable. I'm like I'm certain that just based on the fact that I cannot discern that this isn't your body this is definitely your body <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of you come and circle around the body that crunch has picked um the the wizard librarian is kind of looking at it saying i don't have any teeth and i don't have a beard you sure this is me so this body has teeth and a beard but you don't. No, this body doesn't have any teeth and no facial hair. 
but I did when I died. Oh, so you do know what you look like. Ah, oh, well, we should have had you looking this whole time. <laughs> Why would you stand there and watch me look for your body when you know what you look like? Um, I'm back. The, the wizard thinks for a second and says, You know, you're right. We never should have let you look. We never should have let you help. You are right about that. I apologize. You seem like you need a hug. You're really cranky at the moment, I think. You've been (laughs) stuck in here. I understand it's a stressful situation. We all Uh sometimes make mistakes under pressure. You're so kind. I've been told I'm very empathetic, yes. (laughs) Does anyone else have any ideas for figuring (laughs) out which one of these was mine? Um, <laughs> having this new information of what the person we're standing in front of looks like <laughs> gonna look for beards and teeth but preferably both on same corpse <laughs> it's some beard over here some teeth over here if yes. we just mix and match these bodies um do you have any skills or items that might help? Or are we just going to roll roll with it? Um, you can always just use your base skill if you don't have any. Uh, <laughs> so, does th- would you say this guy I'm... I, I am... I am familiar with the way this guy looks, right? Hmm? I have a familiar bomb. I don't know if that can be used in any way. Oh I think it said this can be used for anything related to its name. <laughs> True. So how about this? How about the way the familiar bomb works is you it you connect it or resonate it with something, and it destroys everything that isn't that. So, like, if you put a piece of gold in it, it would destroy everything that's not gold. I think well, there are no if, rules against that. If you, I'll just look at the. I don't think this is the best idea, but it'll work. You if you get of... in this, <laughs> yes, and then let us run away and press the button, <laughs> it will explode and destroy everything that is not your body. <clears throat> I want to look at that when it's over. (laughs) Uh, But that sounds like a good plan to me. If we can't bother to look for common markings or compare scars or look for teeth, then let's do this. I mean, unless any one of my companions who I am not talking to, but just referencing in a conversation with a librarian (laughs) wanted to do that. Then we could save this bomb for later. So, Mr. Wizard, when I was drinking... Uh, It's Dr. Wizard. Oh, Dr. Wizard. (laughs) Sorry, sir. Dr. Wizard. Um, When I was drinking this really good risky earlier, uh, (laughs) and, like, this is crazy. Like, like, this is all the weirdest stuff. But, like, I could make there be a pig. And, like, maybe the pig can, like, sniff out your corpse. Uh, the wizard just looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> like, waiting for help? you to finish your thought. Would it help if it's a spectral sea pig? Dr. Wizard, I think this is a very... Do- Dr. Wizard, I'm hearing a lot of other ideas, and I think all of them are very good. <laughs> um, the Dr. Wizard is sort of nodding along. So our choices are a bomb (laughs) (laughs) or a sea pig. Okay. Yes, I could just look around real quick. (laughs) Just, just. No, no, I, I think it's safer to go with an external source than to trust you to figure it out. 
Just a quick, <laughs> quick question. <laughs> it's it's a normal it's a normal thing to look for things, right? To most people, yes. So if I were to act normal, <laughs> which is one of my skills, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> you played the system. Okay, so our three choices. <laughs> The bomb, the pig, and a skeleton trying to act normal. I mean, I already found your body, but... <laughs> so, I think the wizard is going to think about it for a second and say, if we, if we go with the pig, they'll be able to find my body and we can try and sneak out of here. Um, no way! If, if we go with the bomb, it could cause a distraction that make, might make it easier to leave. Um, and if we act normal, I have no idea what that means for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, without speaking to one another, you can simply raise your hands in communication with me. Who would like to use the bomb? <laughs> well, you need to ask the other idea. question. <laughs> this is such a terrible idea. If it if it helps, I would like to do all of the plan. <laughs> so if even the person who suggested an alternate plan still wants to use the bomb, <laughs> then maybe we should just use the bomb and use it as a distraction to escape. Someone set us up the bomb. Uh, I think we did that to ourselves. <laughs> All right. We, it, the real bomb was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, alright so the wizard uh, rolls his eyes and steps forward and like does a couple hand motions and gets absorbed into the bomb and there's a big red button on the top and you can set the timer for the countdown is it the final one? we'll see <laughs> <laughs> do I have any idea how big this explosion might be you have no idea how big this right. explosion will be and here's how this is going to work <clears throat> you're going to make a luck check when you set it and we'll see if you give enough time for you to get away safely okay before you do that I'm going to run away <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll give them a moment of a head start. I'll get a run away. Okay. Um, I know normally my rule is that if you say it, it happens, but we are speaking under constraints. Did you say that to a non-librarian? Valerinx or I? Both of you. I don't think I... So I was describing an action that I was going to take yeah. rather than indicating that to that's, them. That's what I was going I was just saying that I I was running away for the uh, bomb was dead. So. Okay. I don't I don't say anything. I just run away. I'll just be like <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So the three of you flee. Um you run out of the room. You go up a couple flights of stairs and uh let's say you get five like two or three minutes away. Can I, can I grab a random corpse on the way? Just hope for the um, best. <laughs> you can do that. Uh, do you want to grab a fresh corpse or what is basically a skeleton at this point? Uh, 
skeleton. Dude seems yeah. like he's been here a while. <laughs> All right. So you you grab a skeleton, sling him over your shoulders, and book it out of there. Uh, all right, Preston. Let's see how well you set set up us the bomb. I rolled an eight, and my luck is an eight. No, oh, cutting it close. But that's good. <laughs> awesome. So reduce your luck by one, and uh, yeah, you set the timer with enough time for you to escape. Um, So it just occurred to me, maybe blowing up the wizard's body would have been simpler. Because that would have freed his spirit to escape. <laughs> but I guess you need to interrogate him anyway, so we'll just keep going with this. It just a random thought just occurred to me. Yeah, well, maybe. Um, but yeah, the bomb detonates. There's like a woof. Um, the library doesn't have an alarm system per se. Instead, there is like a whooshing noise as dozens of other ghostly sea creatures start to swarm and move around and panic. Um, Y'all run back down to grab the wizard's body. And when you run into, into the morgue, you open up the doors and his body was the very first one right next to the entrance. Grab the wrong um, one. <laughs> <laughs> and so you immediately grab it, sling it over your shoulder, and start to book it back up to the to the entrance. Um, so the library has an emergency system where it, it basically disables all of the fields and just floods the library to prevent intruders from escaping or to kill intruders or whatever. That's like the emergency situation. When that happens, you only have a few moments to react. How do you prevent yourselves from being washed down the drain into the depths of the library? You can respond individually, or if you can come up with a group together, you've already broken a lot of rules, so you can talk to each other now. Uh, I think you're muted. Oh, yeah. There wasn't a rule that said no exploding the library, okay? <laughs> so, out of out of universe, I believe that because the uh, wizard had a couple spell books on him, that body has some spell books, and you are trying to remove uh, books from the library. Fair <laughs> <laughs> um, or would they have been destroyed in the blast since they weren't part of him? Oh, hell. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. So you have not technically broken any of the rules. Huh. The library might flood anyway, just as a reactionary measure. I mean, but no, that is exactly right. So the librarians will not try to stop you at all. You are just trying to withstand the force of the water crashing in. I don't know what it does, but this seems like as good of a time as any to cast protection from rain. <laughs> yeah. So protection from rain is one of my favorite spells um, from the original Troika book, and it's a minor spell that just protects you from weather. In this book, because you're underwater, casting protection from rain makes you immune to the physical resistance of water. And you oh. can move around just as if you were on dry land. I have a spell for this exact moment, as it turns out. <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> the tricky part is that the spell costs three stamina, and you'll have to cast it on everybody. Um, well, I'm definitely going to cast it on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't have enough stamina for everyone. You said the water is flooding into, like, like the whole library is flooding at the moment? Yeah, all the windows just turn off. The water floods in from every window. Ah, uh, alright. Um. I'm gonna 
try and use like my awkward bone shield to like sort of like part part the water while I'm moving through it. Ooh. And that would probably protect whoever's behind you too. Okay. I'll uh I'll uh take my trusty boot knife and like kick it into the ground behind Bonehead and kind of like hold on to him. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this, man. <laughs> um, and Crunch, are you going to do anything to, are you just going to hold I, on to Bonehead or do you have an idea? I do not have an idea other than my gut reaction to the situation is like Indiana Jones whipping something so that I can like at least get off of the ground while it's all pouring in and at least like yeah yeah no that's great yeah using the whip to like secure yourself that's a great idea all right um, so yeah I just pull out a whip and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> uh so why don't all of y'all make your checks uh Preston you're gonna be rolling to cast your spell you'll pay your stamina. <laughs> No. Um, Bonehead, you're going to be rolling. <laughs> I don't think you have a skill for that, so you're just going to no. be using your shield and using your base skill. Um, same thing with you, Clay, and with you, Crunch. So all three of you are going to roll under your base skill. Preston's the only one who gets to use his spell. That's I just all like. Right. <clears throat> I rolled a three. Okay, I might be able to do this. I also rolled a three. Yeah. I rolled above <laughs> my base skill, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I, I rolled oh, an no. eight above six. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Bonehead, it's doubly bad because you were the one protecting uh, Clay. So <laughs> the two of you have it the worst. Uh, my question is. Crunch and Preston, will you sacrifice some of your own safety to grab on to Bonehead and Clay as they fly past you? I, I'll give I it will. a try. Um, okay. See. Um, instead of rolling, I'm just going to say that you take some of the damage that they do as you're battered by the water. But okay. thanks to your two successes, you don't get swept into the bottom. Uh, you're just merely risking yourself. You're exposing yourself to the danger. So, let's see how much damage everybody takes. <clears throat> Everyone's going to take six stamina damage. I am hacked up. Anybody dead? Not for a second oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, you've survive the worst that the library can throw at you and you continue your your escape and you leave through the doors and as you're you're running away from the building you see the glow come back on the doors shut and you can faintly hear the sound of hundreds of librarians starting to rewrite new books to fill the library <laughs> The the wizard was the wizard still in the in, in the bomb or did he get like let out? Yep, the wizard's like spirit is in the bomb and the body is slung over. Who has the wizard slung over? Right. The I, I do. <laughs> I thought you grabbed a skeleton. Oh, I grabbed the skeleton. That's right. Yeah. I think <laughs> I do still have the skeleton. Uh, yeah. Probably not anymore with the water. <clears throat> So I'll give you the opportunity right now. You can take a little more damage and keep hold of the skeleton if you want. Deal. Deal. All right. Yes. <laughs> so you take five more stamina damage. Mm. So I, not under any sort of impression that the bomb would have been reusable um, after oh. an explosion like that, probably would have just gone for the wizard's body. Okay. Then we can say that the wizard's soul got back into his body as you ran out. That's fine yeah. with me. Uh, all right. So, let's see what your skeleton is like. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Let me roll up 
So one of the things that Bones Deep includes is a table of 100 random skeletons you can <laughs> roll on. Uh, the guy that you're carrying... Huh. Okay. So, uh, this skeleton... Maybe this explains why you took so much damage. This skeleton is in a huge deep sea diver, like classic uniform with like the giant bell, the bronze, like metal helmet, the clunky leather suit. That's what you've been carrying around the whole time. Wow. <laughs> it's a pretty cool suit though, guys, don't you think? Think it fits me? <laughs> hey, 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 skeleton, are you okay? <clears throat> um. This skeleton is not conscious. It may not even be alive. <clears throat> Do you want to try and revive it? Absolutely. We need all the skeletons <laughs> we can get for the skeleton war. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so in order to revive it, in order to revive it, you're going to have to exchange memories with it and give it some of your own memories. Are you willing to do that? Okay. <laughs> that means you might lose some of the skills and spells you've accumulated. Still willing to risk it? Absolutely. All right. Oh. Ready to give up Vivian's song right at the start, huh? Mm. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, instead of doing a luck roll, what I'm going to ask you to do is number your skills from one to six. How many do you have? So I have, and I wasn't sure, like, as far as, like, the Encourage Parasite, like, did I still have that? We well, don't think we really talked about that. Yes, except you, when you use it, you are discouraging your Parasite. <clears throat> okay, so I have that, Act Normal. Burial rites, imitate, and the Vivian song. I okay. also have um, a couple of skills from the uh, parasite table. There's oh, infested right. first and infested spike. Okay. So label them one to six, and then add another one at the bottom. Or the, the last one will also have a one next to it. And then let's see which one you give to your skeleton friend. Number three. That would be burial rites. This is fitting. So you give up your knowledge of burial rites in order to bring this skeleton to life. Uh, almost like you're allowing them to fully hatch. So it's like you're burying them so they can be reborn as a true skeleton. And their name... Their name is Deb. <laughs> and Deb the skeleton uh, awakens fresh-faced and a little bit confused. So... <clears throat> We've escaped the library. We have the wizard. Uh, the original task was to get information from the wizard, but you have the whole wizard, uh, which you could bring back to your employer and receive your reward. Oh, yeah. I guess what I'm wondering is, we have about an hour, maybe half an hour left. We could play through waking up Deb, meeting your employer, and figuring out how they'll help you get to the moon or we can sort of fast forward things along if y'all need to wrap it up how are we feeling i want to go to the moon yeah deb will be yeah. fine <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll let deb be uh someone that bonehead can do in an epilogue like reach out to and bring about and nurture <laughs> and grow um, i'm just before we leave i'm gonna say I'm just going to reach into one of my many bags and say, you might need this. And I have three flares. I am going to give one of them to Deb. All right. Yep. Deb takes it and like slowly inserts it 
into her mouth. And then looks what? confused as it comes is to that, rest inside her ribcage. Is that what Deb was supposed to do with that, Preston? You can do whatever you like with anything. <laughs> Garbage <laughs> is your oyster. Bend it to your will. You know what? You know what, Preston? Hey, take Crunch takes out his book, crosses off Preston's name inside of it, closes it again. See? You're all, all right. right. <laughs> Beautiful. I think we lost Tilly on the stream. I can... Oh, you're back. Oh. You're back. You popped out of um, OBS for a minute. Oh. I don't know why. <clears throat> Weird. Uh, I haven't lost his feet at all. Okay. Yeah, it's just, just stream dead for some reason. Gotcha. All right. Uh, all right. So let's cut to you turning in your quest for the employer uh, at the sunken bar. <clears throat> Let's see who's who's uh, hired you to do all of this. All right. So the sunken barge is imagine a sort of Jetsons era spaceship mm -hmm. that has crashed into the ocean and is buried in silt. Um, the engines are these weird looking propeller devices. Uh, and the ship is is mostly made up of half globe pieces arranged in various shapes. Um, again, kind of like a Jetson style ship or vehicle. Uh, the entrance to the ship is just a little bit of a pathway sort of worn down Looks like a lot of things have been dragged into it, and a little bit of the silt has been dug out to reveal an entrance. Uh, standing at the entrance is the same crab that you were speaking to before, and it's standing with three or four of its fellows, kind of like bouncers in front of a bar. Uh, Bonjour. And as you... How long are you holding on to that, Tilly? <laughs> oh my gosh. All Climbing is the key to comedy. <laughs> <sighs> I was not ready. <laughs> I didn't even know that I was going to have to be ready at any point. <laughs> uh, the, uh, oh my God. the crab returns your French greeting with a stream of bubbles and clicky clacky noises. <laughs> um, the the crab asks if you have if you found the information. Were you successful? Yes. <laughs> Uh, the crab looks down at the dead body. Says, "What is that?" That's your wizard. It's He's our in information. There. Now, will you let us in to see your master? Um, he's dead. Oh. Well, yeah, when, his... then why did we do this job? <laughs> his spirit's in there. I don't know if. And then all of a sudden, all the wizard or all the crabs kind of like stop. And then in unison, they, they straighten up and they all speak in unison. Um, their bubbles have like a different color, a different flavor, a different tone of voice, if you will. That's and they all speak in one time and say, this is suitable. I can work with this. Bring the corpse inside. And when the message completes, the crabs all kind of collapse a little bit, like they're exhausted. I could do that too, you know? <laughs> Why didn't you? <laughs> they're not my crabs. You can't just use anybody's crabs. That's not you how said, it works, Preston. We just said you could do that. 
Yeah, with a different set of crabs. I feel like that's an important detail. I guess I think so we have more important things to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> so the, uh, you, the path leading in, you enter in through uh, a kind of cargo hold. There's boxes and stuff stacked on the sides. Um, and as you head deeper into the ship, there's corridors. You see the occasional, like, angler fish um, swimming past you. But instead of a little glowing ball at the top, they have some kind of weird, like, holographic display floating above their heads. Um, a few more corridors down and a flight of stairs. Uh, you see a skeleton pass through the corridor in front of you walking in this, like, awkward lockstep formation uh, as it sort of teeters past you and turns a corner and disappears. Um, but you you keep heading in the direction that uh, that the, the lights are leading you to, like the lights light up along the sides of the path and lead you in the direction they want you to go. You enter this large open area. It's a clear glass bubble. It kind of like looks like the bridge or the helm, like the deck of the ship. And in the center is this tall chair with a bunch of wires leading up into it. And uh, as you enter the room, the door slides shut behind you and the chair turns around. And in it is someone who looks almost exactly like the purple wizard. Um, but all of his clothes are black, his hat is black, the little stars on his robe are a different shade of black. Um, and he's his hair is like this dark black, and he has this long, twirly mustache. Uh, this guy looks like a good guy. <laughs> and he has like a couple wires that go into his head. Um, he reaches his hand out, and you hear... Uh, a voice echo from around you, like a bunch of speakers turning on at once. Thank you for bringing the corpse. I will extract the information I require. That's a pretty cool trick. Can we watch? First, what do you desire? We were trying to go to the moon, right? Hmm. There's sort of a bit of a pause after that. Why? Don't you know? I heard they got some good junk up there. It's a good spot to hide from the man. <laughs> I'll never <laughs> think of the moon, man. <laughs> Nobody ever checks the moon. No one ever checks the moon. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I've uh, never heard of the great skeleton war. How is it? How is it that he's never heard of this? I try not to involve myself in matters that are beneath my notice. That's fair. Actually, I would probably do that too if I were in your position. No point. Wait, we're at the bottom of the sea. How can the moon be beneath your notice? Is the the moon is beneath the sea? We should have been digging uh, this whole time, Bonehead. I told you this long time ago. I care not where these sentient piles of skeletal refuse are or what they're doing. They are of no concern to me. And in fact, you're lucky I do not add you to my crew of skeletal salt servants. Mm. However, okay. out of respect for this minor deed you have done for me, I will allow you to take the trash out for me. Mm. Oh. Is that like a metaphor or yeah like trash to the moon <laughs> you're the trash and the way Ouch. you're gonna get there is 
Uh, this ship came equipped with several escape pods, capable of stellar flight. Uh, I have no need of them, and they merely interfere with my designs for this vessel. You may take them and leave. Um, yes. Hey, great. That is fair. Thanks. Deposit the corpse at my feet, and I will begin my extraction. I flop it down. All right, <laughs> flop it down. It says, and if you tarry here for even a second, I hope you enjoy scrubbing bulkheads and doing menial labor. That's good. I'm on. Oh, my. Be gone. Kind of wanted. Okay, let's go. And the chair like turns back around. <laughs> He's not very nice. I'm gonna whisper mm -hmm. to Crunch. Hey, do you think? You think they might want to? Uh, maybe we can add this guy to the list. Oh yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna flip open my book. I'm gonna put that guy in the book. Um, and in brackets, you know the one, and <laughs> close it up again. What name do you give him? Out of curiosity. You just call him that guy? Yeah, it says that guy. Brackets. You know the one. I might also do like a little curly mustache just as a reminder. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, and um, the lights lead you through the ship uh, off to one of like the side panels and uh, here there are uh, there is a single escape pod Barely large enough for all four of you to fit inside. And it's Sorry, got like a blinking, a blinking green light. <laughs> Poor Dev. <laughs> Were all four of you inside? I thought you'd yeah. I, that was my understanding. Yeah, yeah sure. Said, we said bye to Deb and got inside. <laughs> Peace. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, um, Ray and Zed came, joined you yeah. after the library flooded. Oh. Are you going to leave them behind when oh, you head to the no. moon? There, there's no space for them. <sighs> the water on the moon. You guys, I don't think Ori is on the moon. It, you know, Deb, Deb seems like a really great skeleton. Uh, I think maybe I'm gonna stick around here. All right, Crunch. If, wow. if there, you see somehow there's like a drop of water going down <laughs> underneath water. <laughs> but once I get all the good junk, we'll come back. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll, we'll meet you back at the play. tavern. Um, play. Will you go to the moon? Oh yeah, I'm going. Oh, okay. the, the the moon is definitely the safest place for me, hundred percent. Uh, Bonehead, will you abandon Vivian and Deb, whom you've recently rescued and revived, to go to the moon? I mean, I don't even remember why I wanted to go to like. Why are we even <laughs> fighting this skeleton war? <laughs> Who are we even fighting against? But we can't tarry here. Mm. Like, mm. No. I'm gonna say that Crunch is already gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be like in, be like put the jump strap on, and like you getting in this thing or what, Bonehead? <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Crunch is gone. All right. Crunch got this. All right. See you in so, hundred uh, years. <laughs> <laughs> yep uh bonehead preston and clay squeeze into the into the escape pod um preston manages to like squeeze their hand up and slam the the button down there's a whoomp the retro rockets fire and this thing launches out of the ship takes a turn and goes straight up uh, after a few hours of flying, it crash lands on the moon. And uh, y'all survive the landing. 
and begin your new career as skeleton soldiers in the space war. <laughs> or is it space yeah. soldiers in the skeleton war? Skeleton war space soldiers? That's, that's our first task to figure it yeah. out. <laughs> we're, gonna, yeah. we're not actually going to be soldiers. We came here to work in your PR and branding department. Remembering the name of the war. <laughs> well, um, Crunch, you return to your two beloved pets, Ray and Zed, and you you leave the the sunken barge and continue to search for Ori. Uh, on your travels, you hear a story um, of the hero Bonehead who rescued the fair mermaid Vivian from certain doom. Uh, you hear the story of <laughs> you hear the story of um, the skeleton who bombed the haunted library, <laughs> depriving <laughs> the entire underwater denizens of all their knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, and uh, do you think? Crunch ever finds out or who Ori is, or do you think Crunch names a pet Ori in memory oh. of them? I feel like I feel like Crunch finds like after a really long time and hearing that his friends are doing all these cool adventurous things, um, you find him back at that same tavern that they all kind of started this on, and he's taking a He's just pouring drinks through his uh, his rib cage again, kind of thing. It's like, mm. you know, I could have done all of that too. He's like, isn't that right, Ori? And you you know, you look over, and it's like, um, it's a, another like smaller octopus. Like it this ba it looks like a baby octopus. Um, Aww. And you you see that like like a couple weeks before that he slapped the collar on and was like ah, that's good enough <laughs> what if um, one of the people in chat suggests that there's a new rule on the library door now <laughs> yes <laughs> no explosion no detonating bombs no stealing there's a bunch of new rules <laughs> no detonating bombs no conspiring to rescue librarians no stealing corpses. What? It's like <laughs> never going back there now. <laughs> um. Oh, and uh, yeah, we cut to the the teaser for the follow up movie. You know that will never get made because the first one flopped. Um, <laughs> but the teaser is like a. Uh, it shows the the man in the dark outfit um, standing over the wizard's corpse. You see him like waving his hands and the flesh dissolves off of the corpse and the wizard's skeleton like lifts up from the table and the, the man in the dark robe says, it's time to enter the war, my mole, my double agent. <laughs> and then it cuts to credits. Uh, Samuel Jackson shows up to recruit people in the post credit <laughs> scene. Nice! <laughs> the skeletons are part of a new team he's putting together called the Descenders. Nice. <laughs> this is where all the budget for the movie went. That's why it flopped. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It all went to Sam Jackson's cameo. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. No, but that concludes our adventure for Bones Deep. Well done, mm -hmm. y'all. That was awesome. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> my, f my face actually hurts. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that was so awesome. There were so many moments that were, like, caught me off guard. Bone sure. No. <laughs> y'all were, were such great players, and you really embraced, like, the goofy, silly side of Bones Deep, and it was wonderful to see. I really enjoyed playing with y'all. It was perfect. I couldn't well, uh, have thank it. you. Thank you for running this for us. Um, uh, thank you for uh, um, the, 
whole giveaway thing. Um, also, again, Poison Darth Frog will sort that out with you, and congrats. Um, mm -hmm. uh, thank you to Tilly for joining us for the evening. It was a pleasure to have Clay. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we are gonna go on a bit of a raid. There's a few of our friends who are streaming this evening, so we could go over and say hi to them. Uh, the playmat is doing an oops all hags mm. one shot. Uh, there's also um, let's see if we have a few people here. Oh, I'm a sucker for hags. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll go over there. Perfect. We'll say hi. Uh, so if you have our emotes, you could use our sub raid message. If you don't, you can copy the one with the hearts, and we'll go over and uh, say hi to them. If anyone else wants to plug things about what they're up to, David, um, Tilly, do you sure. guys have anything you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I run Technical Grimoire. We publish lots of games, some silly, some serious. Uh, Bones Deep is our, actually our sixth game. So there's a lot of stuff wow. you can check out on the Technical Grimoire website. Um, or if you can figure out how to spell my last name, you can find it that way too. It's a secret. <laughs> Tell no one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Bones Deep is available in this really nice hardcover now. And uh, we're on our second printing, so grab it before it runs out again. It's a really nice book. Uh, Tilly, uh, do you have anything that you want to plug? When when are you guys going to be live next? Uh, I, I think we're going to be live tomorrow, playing some games and hanging out and just chillaxing. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what time. But just keep your uh, alerts on and you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you to everybody. And uh, also I'm just going to say thank you to uh, Dark Fantasy Studio and mad music ttrpg for the music that we used in the background and on the intro tonight and uh everyone remember to uh play with the top down <laughs> bye